Hey, what's going on everybody? Today is a Theta Drop video, T-Drop. So if you're interested in this, stick around and I'm gonna talk about the technical analyst part of the video. But first, before I do that, just a little about T-Drop. What is it? What is it about? T-Drop rewards activity on the Theta Drop NFT marketplace provides decentralized governance for Theta Drop and rewards stakers with T-Drop token rewards. It is a new TNT20 token built on Theta blockchain centered around the groundbreaking concept of NFT liquidity mining. So before I go on, where, do you guys own the coin? If so, uh, where do you get it? I know there's a couple exchanges that have it, but comment below the safest exchange, the easiest way for somebody new um, to, to, to get this coin because I don't own any of it. I mean, I guess you can earn it, right, by spending your tea fuel, but is there a way where you can just purchase it on an exchange? Um, it's not on the exchange that I use. Um, it's probably because it's fairly new. So, you know, early to the party, I guess. Um, so yeah, so T-Drop tokens are earned by users each time they make a purchase using T-Fuel on Theta Drop on the secondary market at launch. And on the primary market slash initial drops in a coming update or through a third-party NFT dApp built on the NFT marketplace, right? So the, the, the smart contract. It can be thought of as a mining T-Drop, right? by providing liquidity to the Theta NFT marketplace. So this incentivizes early adopters of Theta Drop to provide liquidity, which enhances price discovery, improves trading volumes, and drives more user growth and adoption. So basically what this is about, it's sort of a secondary type of method they use to create more adoption in the Theta ecosystem. Right. So it basically incentivizes people to use it. And I'm all for that. Right. Because I was trying to figure out what is the utility of it. So basically the utility value of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but at the face of it, it's an incentive um, sort of token that will drive further adoption for the base of Theta and that of Theta Fuel as well. So uh, continuing, it says Theta Drop users who hold a balance of T-Drop will earn VIP benefits, including early or exclusive access to NFT, limited edition packs, unique offline perks, and more. So uh, I think it's circling around the NFT space. I mean, I like NFTs. I get it. I get the, you know, why people like it. I just think Right now, you know, we have that NFT bubble. Um, I think NFTs are here to stay. I think they're going to be big, but I think they got some time, right? It, it, I think it's going to take a little time for NFTs to really start gaining traction and, and finding their place in this crypto world because, you know, NFTs are people buy NFTs not because, um, they like the NFT per se, it's all about making money, right? So for example, um, go back to when you were younger, right? If, like for a baseball card or Pokemon cards, right? Remember the Pokemon cards, very popular. So as a kid, I purchased a Pokemon cards. I didn't buy the Pokemon cards because I thought I can sell it at a higher price. I bought them because I truly wanted the cards, right? So I'm wondering, do people buy NFTs because they truly like that said NFT? Or are they buying it more for an investment? And then you can, people can say, well, who cares? It doesn't matter. And yeah, that's true at the face of it. But if you want to drive more adoption, more utility, more um, people who want these things, um, then, you know... Uh, I, I see it taking some time, right? Especially in the uh, in the crypto space. Now, I will go and I will um, speak around that in another post I've seen on Reddit that sort of 
kind of addresses what I was saying initially. So, and I'm all for Theta Drop. Believe me, I, I like it. I think it's going to do well. I think the price, um, you know, I think it's early. I think uh, we're going to see some good price movement, and then we're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the chart. But before I do that, just to give a little um, background that people, in case people don't know what it is, um, T-Drop will also serve as a governance token for Theta Drop in the NFT marketplace. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? Uh, being a governance token, T-Drop holders can stake their tokens to gain voting rights for proposed changes to Theta Drop. The first T-Drop vote proposal is expected to be earning rate of T-Drop for liquidity miners. So yeah, I'm, I, I like it. I like the way it sounds. And also, you have to ask yourself this question. Do you believe in Theta? Yes or no? Yes. Right. We, we all know what Theta is. We all know what Theta is capable. And most of us know where Theta is eventually going. And it's on its way to go. Right. It's it's one of the one of the projects out there. That's not even a project anymore. It's it's an actual working system um, that's going places. And so if you believe in Theta, then that means Theta fuel is basically that secondary thing like, hey, What's good for Theta is good for Theta Fuel. And what's good for both of those is also good for Theta Drop. And if Theta Drop is very early, I think it's what, a $63 million market cap? It's basically um, pretty much nothing, right? It's pretty small. And as an investor, that could be good, right? Because it has more potential upside. And then also as Theta, the coin gets more adoption right and it sort of helps each other out theta drop incentivizes people to use theta the network and nfts and things like that basically uh the idea here is to get people using the network right it's all about adoption crypto adoption people want um to to use right to use these uh, blockchains right um, cause the, the market is flooded. It, it's, it's, or I should say cluttered with many different, um, networks and crypto coins and projects. So it can kind of be overwhelming for people to say, you know, if you're new to crypto and you're, you're not sure what, what you, what's good, what's not good. I mean, at the face of it, it all sounds good, right? You go to their website uh, pick any coin. Go to the website. Read the white paper. They make it sound like it's the the new cutting edge thing, right? And it it makes it sound appealing. So it can be a little overwhelming for people to know, hey, what's good, what's not, right? Um, and that's where I think you know Theta is one of those big ones that is gonna uh, change the way um, data involving streaming and many more things involving the internet. Um, I think internet capability and especially uh, internet restrictions, uh, data restrictions, I think, you know, even with Elon Musk and his whole Starlink thing, um, you know, like decentralized internet, right? So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a big thing. And T-Drop right, is just another beneficiary of Theta. So, and, it, and, it, and it's basically used for the adoption, right? So continuing on, the first T-drop vote proposal is to expect expected to be earning the rate of T-drop for liquidity miners as the voting process progresses and stabilizes. T-drop holders will be responsible for creating new proposals to be voted on. These community proposals will also serve as the test bed for community governance uh, governance futures to be implemented on the Theta blockchain itself. So uh, to be voted on by holders of the token, of the Theta token. So there you go. That's what Forbes says. So, so here's the chart, and we're going to get in the chart. But before I do that, real quick, Really quick here on the uh, Reddit forms, this person says, um, so the first fact 
is T drop is a governance token for theta drop. Okay, we know that. The theta drop is merely a dApp built on top of the theta blockchain. Although theta drop is officially developed by theta labs team, it still remains as just a dApp. Remember, when I read this, this is somebody's opinion. This is not uh, a fact, right? This is somebody's opinion. And let me know in the comments if you agree with it or not. Um, but essentially, the person says, so T drop to theta is nothing more than Aave or Uniswap is for Ethereum. And I say that's a pretty big deal. Therefore, we can put T-Drop into a category of its own, separate from Theta Fuel and Theta, which are used to run the network itself. It wouldn't make sense for, say, Ethereum to be a govern, uh, to govern a dApp like Aave, for example. That would mean anyone, even whales, who hold a ton of Ethereum and don't use Aave at all, can influence the future develop, uh, development of it, possibly even in a malicious way. Therefore, we need things like T-Drop as a separate governance token, right? Because it is governing a completely separate dApp that just happens to be also built on the Theta Labs, right? By Theta Labs. So, and this is not even that uncommon. If you look at Mirror and Anchor being built on the Terra blockchain by Terraform Labs themselves, like T-Drop and uh, Theta Stakers, MIRC, MIR and ANC rewards are also distributed to Luna stakers. Next, the purpose of T-Drop is to encourage more users to utilize the Theta Drop platform and buy NFTs, right? So there's the utility value around it, also the adoption. Um, each purchase will reward the purchaser with more T-Drop and holding T-Drop and also unlocks other perks like exclusive. Uh, well, we, we talked about that already. So if you want to read, continue on, um, you can pause the video and uh, you can read it yourself. And then the, the reply to that was this person here. So the number one ply was by this person that he says, this is one of the game changing announcements. Theta has a number of operate, uh, operating units, right? Theta TV, Silver, Theta Network, Theta Labs, and now Theta Drop. Theta has many iron irons in the fire. If you've ever seen or read the roadmap, you should. There is much more than those silly NFT drops going on. Really? Theta Drop is kind of a sideshow. It is not what the developers have been working on for a few, near, few years now. With all different projects and entertainment, of content being developed my guess is this is just a second of several different change chains that will be required if so then odds are we will see three to four more tokens to drop in the coming years uh and he goes on and on and on right so uh i don't know what do you think about everything i just said please leave a comment and let me know um because i'm new to this too i'm I'm trying to figure it all out myself. Um, you know, if, if Theta endorses it and Theta is a part of it and it's all, you know, it, it, you got to take it pretty seriously, right? And especially it can be highly rewarding because you got to know, hey, what's good for Theta is good for Theta Fuel, is good for Theta Drop. And if you're uh, a long-term investor in Theta, this could provide potentially, not financial advice, a good return on investment, given the fact that it's still pretty brand new and it's less than a $100 million market cap, less than $70 million. So, I mean, real quick, this person says, uh, also, Theta Swap has been around for a long time. I didn't know that. Why, why would Theta create such a swap site if they did not plan for more tokens to be added in the future. The key to greater adoption is to having more dApps being developed on the Theta blockchain to provide more use cases in the real world. And with this, there will be surely more things, uh, more tokens being created by governance, rewards, etc. on each particular dApp. Sure, Theta Drop is created by Theta Labs team, but this will be hopefully the first of many dApps to come. Who knows, maybe someone could come along and create a, an NFT ticketing service 
something like Ticketmaster or StubHub. Hey, that's a good idea. But on the Theta blockchain, we can even call it uh, TK its TK its if um, so, you know, he goes on. Um, Theta developing more dApps is exactly what would bring greater adoption. So the key word here is adoption. And then finally, he says, um, one thing to important note, data drop will not have an ICO token sale. And I think that's good because of the SEC and, and things like that. I've read that post comparing Theta and Tron and claiming that it's a scam to make the developers more money. Well, if I was a developer who wanted to milk my community for money, the quickest way to do it was to hold an ICO token, then dump it, right? So that's most likely they don't want to be perceived like that. They don't want an ICO. Um, so this was actually two years ago. Man, this is crazy. That was two years ago. So, um, and I'm, I mean, I've heard of Theta Drop. I didn't really know too much about it. Um, you know, my main focus is on Theta and even Theta Fuel. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to take it more seriously. People have been asking about it, so here I am reading about it. So, without further ado, so this chart is, like I think, the, the one that it's been around the longest, and this goes back to February of 2022. So, it's about two years old, right? So, February 2023, February 2024, yeah. So, yeah, and that article lines up. So, it's been around for two years. Um, so... You know, when things come out, I don't really, I, I want to see something, right? Because look at this. If I were to get into this, it's just basically a death spiral. But now we see this and now it comes to life, right? So, um, yeah, well, let's, let's take a look at it. So right, before I, I, I dive into the analysis part, I also want to, for people to understand, um, right here, the market cap is 65 million. Uh, let me do it like this. $65 million, uh, that, that much at all. Um, so the total supply is 20 million, 20 billion. The max supply is 20 billion. And the circulating supply is around 12 billion. So it's about 60% uh, to the max. Which leads me to this. So um, I want to talk about inflation real quick. So let's say, for example, when the coin came out, there was 5 billion coins in circulation, right? Well, now there's 12 billion coins in circulation, right? But the price is lower. So by the time we get back up here, if we get back up there, Right? How many coins would be then in circulation? So the, the so this leads me to the market cap and inflation thing, right? So for example, the Bitcoin market cap broke out into a new all-time high before the price of Bitcoin did. That's because there was more coins in circulation now than there was when it was at its previous all-time high back in 2021. Which means um, it, it, it's basically harder for coins to break out because of the inflation. Not saying that this coin has a lot of inflation, just talking in general. Some coins have a lot of inflation, right? Where they make an all-time high like several years ago, right? Uh, maybe like four or five years ago, and then they have a very hard time breaking that high. Well, part of the reason is perhaps um, there was more inflation, right? So that means there's more coins in circulation, which means it's harder. Uh, that means there's more supply, which means it's harder to get that price going higher. So, for example, let's say there's 10 billion coins in circulation here. Then we get to the all-time high of this chart, and there's also 10 billion coins in circulation. Well, it would be pretty easy to break out, right? But that's not the case. If let's say there's five billion here, and then by the time we get back up here, 
there's what, 15, 20 billion? So if, if the price has a hard time breaking out, people say, well, why is it so hard to break out? There's more adoption, more people own it. The market cap is higher. I mean, back when it was over here, it was barely anything. Well, that's because there's more coins in circulation. So I just wanted to point that out. Not talking about theta drop itself, but just saying in general, right? So the first thing I see is the price opening up, right? And then we just sort of dwindle down. That's a lot of coins. There's a coin out there called Casper. I consider it one of my smaller cap gems. Um, and, it, and it looks the same, right? It has an opening and it comes down, crashing down. Then it finds its base and then it starts to reverse. And that's what happens with a lot of coins. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So first thing that I see here is Wyckoff accumulation. Um, so looking at it side by side, you can see the price, right? It's below the bull market support band, below the bull market support band, finally uh, capitulation, right? So same thing here, we're, we're trending down. Then what happens? We have this rally to the upside. Same thing here. We have this rally to the upside. Then we come all the way back down. We come all the way back down, right? Then we make this move back to the upside. Same thing here. We sort of play around in here. We make the move back to the upside. Then we go down into our spring phase. Same thing here. We go down into our spring phase. So let me actually make it bigger. There we go. So it's sort of a, anytime you have a chart that has a low market cap, you get these odd looking shapes and candles, right? You can see how tight the range is here. It's very, very tight. I mean, it's like boom, 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 right? It's like a, an engine that's cold, that's barely starting up. Um, so you know, same thing, right? We have this one, two, one spring. So we have one, two, one spring. So we see here, right? Same thing with theta, theta fuel and a lot of other ones. We come down and we take out this low. So the price comes down and it takes out this low. So if I put a trend line here, I put it right there. And then I'll put another one right there. There's two lines there. You can see um, we come down and this wick, we wicked below and we tapped into all that liquidity. Then instantly we started to impulse. So that's a good thing. So this is a bullish, this is a bullish chart. Um, so, you know, we got the Wyckoff out of the bag. Uh, that is clearly, a, a, to me, a Wyckoff accumulation. So we'll delete that. Let's put a range on here now. And we'll do this. So then the next thing we look at is, okay, how did it react following that Wyckoff accumulation? Well, we had a, we broke above the bull market support band, but then we came back down in the spring, in the spring phase. So then what happened? We had a one, two, and we back tested the bull market support band. Very bullish. You could see this first initial wave following the spring is very important. You can see here um, we have an engulfing candle, massive engulfing candle, impulse. We have this impulse to the upside, right? And then you can see this correction to the downside. So this one candle basically you know, that's how you can tell it's, it's, you know, trending higher, right? And then look at all these other candles, red, red, green, red, green. It's basically chopping, right? We had a three wave pullback here. So I can say this is a one, right? One wave. And then you have an A, B, C, right? And that A, B, C back tested the bull market support band. And look at this. We had one, um, one, two, three, four days of sort of, you know, ranging on that uh, pullback, right? And then that initiated the next 
impulse to the upside, right? So then we had another impulse, massive impulse to the upside. And then the same thing, we have these corrective candles to the downside. We didn't uh, back test the bull market support band there, but it's okay. We, we already did. And we came pretty close, right? And then we started the next impulse to the upside. So what does this mean? Well, this to me looks like a one, two, one, two. And that, my friends, is very, very bullish. So let me get everything off the screen and we'll talk about that. Okay, so theta drop, T drop has a one, two, one, two working on it here. And you can even say, right, that, well, the thing is, is, you know, if it didn't come down and take out this liquidity and it was sort of a Wyckoff schematic two, right, versus the other one, then we can say that this is a one, two, one, two, and now we're in that third wave, right? But this, um, first wave, then we had the second wave, that's invalid. Wave two can never go ever, ever go below wave one, right? Not even a wick. So we have to, which is actually good because then the wave one starts here, right? Which means we have more waves to go, which means more wave potential upside to go, right? So then that was a one, two, Right. This was another one, two. Actually, let me zoom in here. Look, check it this. Check this out. Look at this. We have a one, two. We have another one, two. We have another one, two. Right. So we have a one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. That's bullish. So now, um, it looks like we're in that third wave. I don't like this wick here. That was a nasty rejection. I and mean, that sometimes that happens on smaller market caps. They, um, it's sort of hard to balance out that volatility and the trends because market orders are flying and the price is sort of erratic, right? And that's another reason it could lead to a, a bad situation trading. So trading smaller coins is harder because a lot of times it takes out your stop right? There's a crazy swings to the upside that take out your stops. So for me, it's it's sort of better to, to buy on the spot exchange and just hodl, right? Rather than trying to leverage trade it. Just, just uh, my opinion, not financial advice, but this is a, a one, two, one, two, right? And now we're in, looks like we're in the middle of the third wave. So wave three has five waves. So right now, it looks like we have one, two, maybe perhaps we're in the middle of that third wave. Then we get four, five. And this whole thing, if that's the case, we'll talk about other options, but if that's the case, then this whole thing becomes a one, two, all of this is three, then we get four, then we get five. Right. So something like that. Maybe wave four has already begun. I don't think so because it's pretty small. Um, and, you know, we got to give it a little bit of time because it is running into resistance here. Right. We're running into resistance. All of this is major uh, resistance in here. Right. So we got to get through that area. So that's the bullish, very bullish way to look at it. It looks very bullish, right? And I'm bullish because, number one, right, we came down, which is always good. Number two, we went sideways, which is even better. Number three, we developed a Wyckoff accumulation pattern. Number four, we broke above the bull market support band. Number five, we back-tested the bull market support band. Number six, we have a series of one, two, one, two, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, right? So it looks pretty good um, for, for, for more continuation to the upside. Now, let's talk about potentially a bearish idea here. So 
we could have, and when I mean bearish, I mean short-term bearish. What we could have here is a one, two, three, four, five, which is what? A diagonal. So you can see here the price, um, one, two, three, four. You could see wave four is overlapping with wave one, right? So one, two, three, four, and then five, which means if that's a diagonal, or sometimes people like to say, uh, like, you know, like a, like a rising wedge of some sort, right? Um, which is not really a wedge shape, but um, a diagonal. So if you don't know what it, just go to Google, type in Elliott Wave Diagonal, and you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So if that's the case, and we have five waves, then that means we should get a three-wave pullback, or a small one, right? Or maybe just flag out, right? But commonly, you get a three-wave pullback. And we can retest the bull market support band. Then we get another big impulse to the upside, right? And that, my friends, that would then be uh, sort of a, a, a one, two, one, two, and then another one, two, right? So you would have these seri another series of one, two, one, twos, which would lead a, to a massive upswing. So either we're in the middle of that third wave or we're going to flag out for another wave two. So it, I don't know that it looks pretty bullish, right? You can see here was the breakout right here. We hit the resistance. We flagged down. We broke out and then we kind of back tested it here, right? We back tested it. You can see the wick right here. This wick got bought right back up. That means buyers defended this breakout area, which means it was a true breakout. Then we have this other range right in here. We broke out of that, but now it seems like the price is struggling a bit. And it is the weekend. It's it's the weekend. So we'll see how it looks on Sunday uh, and Monday. So if you haven't already, you can check out the video I posted yesterday about Theta. Uh, the theta only video, the previous video I did, I think it would be very helpful um, for this for this here. So um, those are the two ideas. So let's see what happens if I go to the smaller time frame. You can kind of see these fractals in here, right? You can see um, sort of this kind of looks like this move here. Right. And then you drizzle down, then you have a pop. Right. So you have this impulse, you drizzle down, then you have a pop and then you sort of drizzle down again before that next pop. Maybe we drizzle down again for that next pop. Right. So, um, yeah, the smaller time frames are not very useful. Um, so overall, I'm I'm bullish on the macro front. I'm bullish. The thing is, is. Um, when you have this one, two, three, four, five, we have a five wave move there, right? So you have to kind of take that seriously, right? I mean, you have even here, you have one, two, three, four, five, and this would be a one, two, right? So if this is a one, two, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, then this is a one, two, all of this is three. Maybe we flag out for four and then we get five, right? So on the smaller subwaves of that, right? So when you zoom out and you take all that off the screen, then the whole thing becomes a series of one, two, one, twos, which leads to a bigger third wave. So we get one, two, all of that's three, four, and then we get five. So that would be... And then depending how deep this pulls back, if we overlap here, we can have a one, two, one, two, and then another one, two, perhaps, right? Which would set us up for a big third wave. And that third wave would be a part of the fifth wave of the overall um, structure. 
So you have one, two, all of that's three, four, and five, right? But then since it's a one, two, one, two, you get a four, five, four, five, right? So we'll see how that goes. I, I mean, this is speculation. Again, when you have coins that are very small cap, they rec they're recently new. I mean, yeah, it's been around two years. We do have structure. We do have pattern. We do have um, bull market support bands, things like that. We do have that stuff. But look at the weekly chart. So when you zoom out on the weekly chart, um, not too much to go off of, right? Not too much. But that's that's why we have, you know, tools and we can sort of see what's going on here. So, um, yeah, when I look at the weekly, it does look like a good one, two, one, two. And now we're in the middle of that third. I don't like that rejection wick here. So I'm curious to see is if that was the end of the wave right here of this of this one, two. So one, two. Right. And then we have this this uh, this move to the upside. And then we obviously came back down. Now we're retracing that move. So are we just filling in that retracement or are we going to break the top? So uh, for that, we'll zoom in even further. You can see here price um, drizzling out. Then bam, you have this massive drop. I mean, massive uh, pump to the upside. Then you have this big, nasty rejection wick. So then it's sort of, okay, now it's retracing it, coming back in, coming back up, coming back in. Let's see if we can continue getting through the retracement of this wave. So let me put that on here. So from about here down to here, I mean, we're not even at the 382 yet, right? So I want to see the price get at least up to here. And I think that can happen because like Theta and Theta Fuel, it looks like we have a potential ascending triangle. Let's see here. I haven't zoomed in this close on this chart yet. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Looks like we have an ascending triangle here on the two hour chart of Theta Drop. So um, that looks pretty good. So the measured move of this would be approximately, you take that there, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it right there, and then I'll put the line on top of there. So that's approximately 0 0.0098, and currently we're at 0 0.0053. So the percentage move um, from where it is now, well, I'll do it from the breakout, is a pro, wow, that's a massive, that's 74%. And that still doesn't get us above that wick. So if I put the retracement on here, that gets us to almost a 786. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see if we can get through that 786 at 0 0.010 um, or at least the 702 at 0 0.009. So yeah, that's what I got for Theta Drop. Uh, again, the macro, I think it's bullish. I think we got more upside to go. Um, the question I have is on the small time frame. Is this a one, two, three, four, five? And then we get a three-way pullback with a continuation. If that's the case, then it's going to be very bullish because it'll set us up for another one, two, right? Now, this one, two, three, four, and this could be five, right? So here's here's the here's the other idea here. It's the same idea, but look at this. We have one, two, three, four, and this was five. Then this is A. Now we're in B, right? Maybe B gets us up even higher. 
from this ascending triangle breakout. We break out, we hit the measured move in wave B, so it becomes A, B, and then we get C. Maybe like a, a running flat, right? Where we back test this area down in here, then we go. So if I had to guess, I would probably go with that option, which is we have an ascending triangle, right? Let's break out of the ascending triangle. We'll hit the measured move. That will be a B wave of this A, B, C. And then, boom, it's really, really, really going to accelerate. And that sort of lines up with the other charts as well because it looks like, you know, some of them might be needing a correction soon, right? But before they correct, I think, like I said in the other video, we could have another wave to that upside. So let me zoom out again. Um, so yeah, it would sort of look like this. So let me take that off and I'll do it like this. So we have a one, two, three, four, and five. We come down in wave A. Now we're going up in wave B. I think B has higher to go. Then we come back down in wave C. Now wave C can come all the way down here. It can back test here, but I don't think it's going to be that big. I think it's going to be a small one. Then we can really start to accelerate to the upside. If that's not the case, if that's not right, then I'm thinking we're still in the middle of the third wave, which means one, two, one, two, and now we're in the third, which is a one, two. Now we're in the middle of three, four, five. So something like that. So it really depends how we get through this wick. If this wick wasn't here, I would feel more confident in that. But I want to see us break this wick first. And then uh, I'll say, yeah, let's go. And remember, too, we also have resistance all through here right we're running into this resistance pile but uh you know if we can have a weekly candle close above one cent i think uh i think this thing's on its way to a new all-time high even if it has more inflation right or more coins in circulating supply so yeah that's it for theta drop it's bullish i mean what else can i say if i compare it let's compare it to the price of theta We'll go side by side. Let's take that off the regular scale. I mean, you can see, looks pretty similar here. Not, not completely, right? I mean, just comparing it to theta, I mean, look where theta is. It's way the heck up here, right? Theta drop is way the heck down here. If you, if you scale it to portion, right? Now, if I zoom in and we get some detail in the waves, then let's try to match match that up there. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty close, right? If I'm matching it up to scale. Um, you can see here, the difference is data had a 1, 2, and this has a 1, 2. But theta drop also had this one, two in the middle of it, right? Whereas theta just had a nice rounded bottom impulse. So it looks like theta drop could be more bullish because of that, right? Remember what I was talking about with theta, right? Going back to theta real quick. I basically said this. If, if you know, either this is a one two now we're in three maybe three's not done yet three and then we get four or five right fair enough but one of the things i said um a while ago probably when we were back over here right there or better or uh what was it over there somewhere in here i said what would be very, very bullish for theta is if we can get a one, two, 
this comes all the way up here, then we get another uh, one, two. So it'll be a one, two, one, two. Then we get the third wave, right? Which is this wave here. So I kind of wanted this wave to be at a later time because then you could get that one, two, one, two, right? Which is very bullish. So basically a one, two looks like this. One, two, one, two. And then you can just draw like a trend line on it, right? Which just sets up for a big, so it's like boom, 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 right? It, it, it's like you're bouncing and then you bounce it again and bam, it's it's a double bounce, right? Um, which causes a, a, a very impulsive reaction. Now for theta, we only had one bounce, but for theta, we also had a lot of accumulation here at the bottom of the bull market support band right, which created that velocity. And you can go back and watch my videos. Uh, go back and watch early February. And you can listen to what I was saying back then. So I didn't think it was going to happen this quick. But man, it is a beautiful thing to see. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, just a little update here on theta. Going back to the four hour chart. We're still in this potential ascending triangle, right? What we talked about yesterday. So something like this, right? Um, we'll see if that holds true. Um, yeah, we'll see how that works. But we're basically, here's your, um, your demand line. Right. And here's your supply line and you're coiling in to an apex. So the question is, do we break out of the apex or do we break below the apex? Now, ascending triangles, typically, I, I think it's what, 60, 70 percent of the time they break to the upside. So if it breaks to the upside, like I said yesterday, the measured move is approximately conservatively around the uh what is that around that four dollar area right now if i measure it from the wick i think it's more around like four dollars and fifteen cents four dollars and uh, four dollars and eight cents and then if i measure it even more from wick to close from this part um that's a little bit probably too high, $4.30. But I think I got to that $4.15 by using the trend-based Fibonacci. So I took it from here to the top of here to the bottom of here. And I believe that one-to-one -one extension is... Oh, I'm sorry. I think, yeah, the $4.15, $4.18 came from this over here. So back over here... Uh, between four dollars and um, three cents up to 437 so you know in the middle say about four dollars and 15 cents so that could be a potential target for this ascending triangle breakout if it's going to break out now we also have you can see divergence right um But actually, you know, the divergence is barely anything. It's not that bad at all. You can see going all the way up, and this is sort of flat here. It's not that bad. It's actually not bad at all. It comes up here. And now we're sort of going flat, but this is trending down, right? So it's, it's allowing bullish consolidation for the RSI to cool off. So if we get down here, um i think what is it below um the 50 of the rsi and then we set up bullishly i think it would be a, a good uh, possible trade here and then another thing too to look for is it if we can break above three dollars and what 26 cents so yeah we'll see we'll see what theta is i'm again i'm tracking this ascending triangle let's see what happens 
Um, if we do break out, like I said yesterday, then uh, let me put this on log scale. Then that would be a one, two. And then in the third wave, we have one, two, three, four, and five. And in the fifth wave, we have one, two, all of this is three, four, and five. So the whole thing is one, two, three, four, five, right? So let's see, maybe the fifth wave busts us out and we have an extended fifth. That would be awesome, right? Um, but either way, if we do get that a fifth wave, and then at that point, I would expect the sort of consolidation phase to kick in because from here to here is one wave. Eventually, this one wave is going to end and we're going to get some correction that goes up. Now, the question is, does it end higher? Does it end higher or does it end now? Right. I made a case for both. Um, so going to the three day chart. I mean, theoretically, it can get all the way back up to, be, I would say, between 5 and $8 before that wave ends. And that would be kind of cool because then if we can impulse to the upside without having to um, spend a lot of time, then that means, you know, we're getting a very massive third wave, which is good. We want the third wave to be as big as possible. But we don't want it to take too much time because then it sort of loses that momentum, right? So if this is a one, two, and then all of this is three, we get up here, then we would play around because this area right here, that's a lot of, that's a big cluster of resistance. See, this was nothing. Currently, we're right here. We sliced right through this. We, it took us a long time to work through all that. But once we did it, we did it pretty nicely. Right, so that would be the big one here. So if we get a one, two, all of this is three, then we play around in four, then we break out for wave five. And then that fifth wave could be um, the beginning of a brand new all time high. And I think that's coming. I think that's coming um, this year. Um, so my timeline, time is very hard to predict, but I would say fall and winter are typically really good for crypto especially winter right like november december is usually really good for crypto so we'll see how that goes if not spring if not then spring of next year we can be looking at the end or the uh the breaking out of the all-time high basically already in price discovery so if i had to put a line so we'll say uh, there's December, right, which is bullish. And then here is uh, spring right in here. So, I mean, when you look at it from, let me go to the weekly. When you look at it from the weekly chart, it doesn't look that far away. I mean, this line right here is spring of next year right so it's not too far away so um, the, the the goal here is to break this high before um, we run into the these two lines so that's the question can we get one two three and then four five and break out of here before spring of next year that would be interesting to see I think we can do it I think this year will, will be a good year for crypto I mean, it's already shaping out to be very good, as we talked about here many times um, in this accumulation structure. Um, I mean, I, there's so many channels that I followed that were saying, we got to go lower, we got to go lower, we're going to 10K, we're going to 9K, and, and it was so bearish in here. But you can see the bullish divergence being formed. You can see one, two, three four five we have five waves so why would we keep going down it didn't make sense and then also we had a range within fourth and the fifth and we also had divergence so and, and, and even with bitcoin so you had professional guys out there that were on uh kitco 
and other you know they made a name for themselves successful traders that were saying yeah we got to keep going down but i don't th i think they're too used to the um to the uh yeah and they're basically from over here so a lot of people were thinking yeah we got to come down here right so somewhere in here um even uh you know 12k between 6 and 12k i've i've seen it all and i didn't disagree with that but the thing is how we get there so it's pretty hard to go 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 all in a straight line down here it didn't make sense right that's why when you have a big crash usually you get a retracement and then once you get that retracement, then you can go back down. But I think that was the big miss that people had back in here, right? But here's the thing. When we started developing a base and then we developed another base, it started looking more like an accumulation versus a retracement. Like, look at this. This was a crash, right? And then we had a retracement. And that's what was normal, right? It didn't keep going down, 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 down. We had a retracement, but this retracement was sort of a straight shot to the upside. This retracement was more like accumulation, accumulation, right? Um, that's why I was thinking, you know, when we get up here, we're going to have more accumulation. But we sliced right through it. Because if you look, go back over here, it looked a lot like this where we had accumulation, 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 then we break out, right? So there are two different styles. One was a big impulse. The other took its time and went sideways and built bases, which led me to think, okay, now we're probably not going down to 9, 10K like people, a lot of people anticipated we were. And so when we, when we broke out of here, and then when we got through the retracement levels, I was like, now it's probably definitely not the case. Um, what's more likely would be a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation go. So, um, yeah, this A, B, C, yeah, it made sense. But it wasn't, they weren't calling for it up here. A lot of people were calling for it down here, right? Because when you're in the middle of a crash, it feels like it's going to keep crashing and crashing and crashing and it's sort of like you know you're capitulated and you sold out and you just want it to go lower to fit the narrative but um i always say like if you take take the wave so here's the wave take it all the way to the top right and then cut that wave in half that's all you got to do here's the wave you cut it in half that's exactly where we went we went halfway we don't go all the way we go about halfway sometimes we can get more than that but if you're an accumulator if you're a long-term investor hodler a believer in crypto there's no point in waiting for it to get down there when you can simply just buy a little bit now buy a little bit later and continue to dollar cost average right i mean look at this I can't believe people thought that. Look at here. So here's the one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So look at wave four. You had divergence between wave four and wave five. Wave four and wave five is going down. But look at the RSI. The RSI is going up. Price going down, RSI going up. That told people, hey, let's go up. So, and that's what happened. So anyway, that's my rant for today. Again, theta and theta drop. We'll go back to theta drop again. Um, yeah, on the weekly chart, it looks very bullish. I think we're going to continue marching higher. In the short time frame, we could pull back a little bit. Um, if it's a one, two, three, four, five, it's a diag. We can have a three-way pullback before continuing up. So, but either way, I, I think uh, we got to get through this uh, resistance right through here so comment below where do you where do you get this coin let me know um, where you purchased it or where you can get it and uh, where do you think it's going 
Um, and by the way, let me do a Fibonacci. I didn't even do the target. So here we go. Here's the grand finale right here. How high can this thing go? Well, first of all, we could see a little shoulder ahead. Maybe we come up here and then we develop a little another shoulder, right? In which case, the measured move for that would approximately be on log scale. Let's see what this takes us to. It takes us above the all-time high of 0 .0, it's 0 0.072. So from where it is now, that's uh, to the all-time high, that's another 1,000%. And then to that measured move is about almost 1,300%. So that's not bad, not bad at all, 1,300%. So what about if it breaks an all-time high? Well, it's kind of hard to gauge because you don't really, you sort of want a bull run and then a pullback. And then you measure the Fibonacci. But we don't have that. We just have this starting point. So if I take a Fibonacci and I put it here and I go all the way down, right about there, um, the first target would be approximately 10 cents. That's pretty good. The second target would be, be uh, about 15, 16 cents right in here. And then the third target, if we hit a full 4.236 extension, would be around 26 cents. So that is pretty, pretty big especially since it's not even a penny yet right so let's let's do the the measurement on that uh, so about right there uh, well let me just do it this way so from where we are now to that first target that's about 1800 percent that second target around 3,000% and if we had a full 4.236 extension that's almost 5,000% that's basically 5,000% so that's pretty big so what like about a 50x potential so this is a 50x potential coin right here so I don't know all the logistics of the market cap and how that would be but we'll see we'll see how that goes so anyway That'll do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and be awesome if you can leave a like and uh, comment below what you think. And uh, uh, if you have any coins you want me to take a look at, drop them below for the for the rapid fire session I'll do this coming week. And uh, maybe I might drop in soon to discuss the weekly close because Sunday is approaching. So uh, a lot of weekly closes will occur and uh it'll kick off the next week and uh, we'll see what it brings but yeah thank you guys for watching catch you on the next one cheers